Good morning, fish heads. Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates, and this is a workshop update. So lots to unpack here, including my coffee. So there's enough content here, enough material to do two separate videos, and I'm probably going to end up doing it that way. Clearly, it's Hinkle Day. Um, it, there's been a lot of Hinkles that have moved through this studio here at Jekyll Bates inside the Bullshed Swim Bates shop. Um, in the last few weeks or so, I actually was, um, was given the green light from Matt McKee that he wanted me to paint eight for him, which was awesome. Thank you so much, Matt at McKee Outdoors for the opportunity to do just that. Um, and we had some fun with it. The, the also happening at the exact same time was, as you now know, there's been a release of the ABS version of our bullshad trick shad. So that's been happening. That was a monumental chunk of time that we've been spending on that. And that's a contract obligation. So in between those, I get to do all of this cool custom work. So this is, I think, going to be two separate videos because I have two separate groups of baits. The first, these eight here in front of you, and then I've got the three here from Sam Clymer. So these are from Matt McKee at McKee Outdoors up in Maryville, Tennessee. If you haven't heard anything about Matt McKee and McKee Outdoors, go check them out. I think that hopefully soon there's going to be some website activity going down, which is super awesome for him but he's just got such a crazy volume of inventory in his store um, another reason to go visit if you guys are up in that area please go hit him up go see him um, super cool guy knows everybody literally everybody in the entire swim bait industry and bass fishing industry and fishing industry but these are for him and his guys his group of guys and then sam climber in texas down at pond king aka lake pro tackle also super cool guy um have been painting for him for a while but i did some spray sessions on these i did like some tips and tricks on these that you're going to start seeing uh the past few weeks as i've been spraying these and getting them up in clear coat and then i did actual spray sessions with a couple two, i think two of his three which is super cool so that's going to be coming out so i think we're going to reserve this for the second video just because it coincides with some spray sessions that I think you guys would be really interested in. There, one is a really faded bluegill, which it was super cool, but harder than you think to do. Um, so those are also happening. But let's concentrate on these. This, I'm going to start with um, uh, tips and tricks that came out. So when I dropped this video, I had like 1.5 thousand views in about an hour, which was wild. Um, I, it was just like a little 27 second set, uh, short that I did on the YouTube channel and on Instagram and Facebook and wild volume of views. So that was pretty cool. And one of the things that makes it cool is I don't know if the camera is going to do it justice or pick it up, but it's, you know how like you pick up a dying shad and there's like the scales that come off on your fingertips. I did some really cool mica glitter, um, to represent because the shad have such tiny little scales, um, and then also for the time of year we're moving into, this seemed like a really, really good pattern. Um, you're going to get that shad die off. You're going to get the kill that happens every fall as the thermocline flips and these guys. So I just, man, what a blast to do these, uh, these hinkles. So this is that Tennessee dying gizzard shad. And then let's see, that was first in front of my hand. These two are identical. They're going to two different guys, um, but they wanted the same pattern. This is that really cool, also a dying shad pattern um, that also represents a little bit of color shift as well. And the Tennessee guys love their purple. So I added just a little pop of color into that, but you'll see that this switches from black when you're looking at it from the side and then color shifts across the top and then back to black. And there's just a little hint of green in here as well. So this is one of two of dying shads that are going to somebody, actually two people. And then the other one is more of a thready type color. I'll bring that up into the camera. 
give you guys some close up on that. A lot of people seem to have, um, I wouldn't say difficulty, but because of the scales on this, it's difficult to get a good tight wrap if you want to scale it. There's already scales there, and I deal with that all the time at Bullshad, so I'm used to having scaled baits, for example, this, which is going to be in a separate video as well. Um, so the biggest recommendation if you guys are thinking about painting hinkles or you have a hinkle and you want to get it painted is play to the strong suit of the bait itself. So when you do things like um, add depth or start with black as a background, instead of putting white down first, you do a black layer and then you spray from the opposite direction or you can even do like the paintbrush swipe just to get those scale tips and that really makes a difference. And these things will shine if you paint them the way they're meant to be painted, which is playing to the strong suit of the scales in this in the baits. So again, had just such a good time doing these gizzards and the trout. We'll pick the trout up in a second. And this little thready. Also some color shift in here. You can see that changing from blue into purple into green. This is a three color shift. No, I'm not going to give away what I use for that. It's a little bit different than the Vallejo shifters. To get a three, true three color shift, that's um, it's a little bit of money there. But this is a little bit of money here too. So it's always worth give, putting your best foot forward on whatever bait you're painting. But if you can just make it pop just a little bit better, we like to do it for you guys. So, and then I have a little bit lighter. So you can see the difference. These are very similar patterns. What's the difference? This one has a black and this one doesn't. Huge difference, huh? And with metallics, if you guys are painting any kind of metallic, black makes all the difference in the world as a, as a starter. So it really makes the metallics pop. Really brings out the color as well. So that's two very similar baits that have a difference in background. And it also portrays depth a little bit. You can see a little bit more shading and shadow on a black background too. So it all depends on what your preference is, what you guys like to do, how you guys like to fish your baits. And then we've got these trout. Boy, I had fun painting these. So trout have always been, probably because that was the second fish I ever caught in my life, and I, it was a rainbow. So um, just some beautiful colors on even the stalkers I was probably catching as a kid. But I've always loved painting trout, painting perch, um, growing up on the Susquehanna and Chesapeake. Striper I love to paint as well. Some of my favorite fish to catch also. So get a get a nice close up here of this rainbow. Also some color shift. You can see that green purple, which is paramount. And then there's I think this is a green purple gold shift because there is going to be a little bit. And then again, when you lay it on on its side, all you're seeing is that stalker color. So it's pretty cool how you can get. Oh yeah, it's just you know some red and some pink, and then you flip it and you really start to see that color shift come in. Super cool. So anyways, I know I'm just kind of kind of geeking out. It's super nerdy, I guess, but it's a lot of fun. So for Matt McKee and his group of guys, this is what I've got for you guys today. The other trout, second verse, same as the first. But then I even like, I did a brush detail. I did a lot of, of artist detail brushing on this as well as airbrush just to get that extra little sprinkle of spice on there for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy these patterns and you catch some monsters or if it's a wall hanger, I hope that you enjoy it. I definitely enjoy painting these for you guys. So go check out Matt McKee at McKee Outdoors in Maryville, Tennessee and his band of merry men. And uh, that's what I got. So this is going to be a second one. And then we need to go over everything else that's going on, which is probably going to be my weekender for tomorrow. So I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your day, wherever you are in the world, on the planet. 
and I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.